I call Brett Hudson. Thank you, Mr Chair. I appreciate, I appreciate that uh, this is the first time the Chair has sat, and this debate is the first time the Chair has sat on this bill, uh, but Mr Speaker has heard a number of times people say the same thing about it. So I, I resolved that I would not repeat that the nominus, this is an omnibus bill which has minor technical changes that have a, a unanimous agreement across the House. Lucky. Mr Chair, as you could, one could tire very quickly of hearing every member say such thing, but I did want to take a call, sir, to speak on the, uh, the changes to the Principal Act, Births, Deaths, Marriages and Relationships Act 1995, because I think the current provisions there have the uh, potential to be quite troubling in their, in their effects. And in fact, it is Clause 15 of the Statutes Amendment Bill which replaces or, or replaces within that Principal Act uh, Clause 21A uh, and particularly Subpart 2, which is around the proof of identity, sir. And I, th there is actually quite a great deal to it, and I won't read out the full detail, but what it does amount to, sir, is that someone seeking to change a name, their name, must now, under the new provisions, actually provide satisfactory evidence that they are the person themselves who is seeking the name change or the legal guardian or authority uh, to make that change. Because, very troubling, sir, the way that the law stands today could potentially allow a person to change the name, change the name of someone else or in fact to change their name to someone else's because that proof of identity is not required to the state this change will give it. So, you know, just hypothetically, sir, just an illustration to help show the magnitude of this, this troubling provision. A person, a Ms Willow Jean Prime, could choose to change her name to Mark Osborne and she wouldn't have to prove that she's actually Mark Osborne and has a right to that name. And you might wonder why would someone do that? Well, if Ms Prime changed her name to Mark Osborne, at least she'd have her party's support in the by-election. So you can understand, sir, why she might try uh, and to do that very thing. But fortunately, fortunately, this very sound, pragmatic act we are taking in the Statutes Amendment Bill will prevent such things ever occurring into the future. And it is most important because, quite frankly, uh, it's the only way she would get any support in this by-election, is if she were to do that. So I would also like, though, to comment on another Act that is amended in this uh, Statutes Amendment Act, and that is the Local Government Act 1974, in particular Clause 45, 43 of this uh, Statutes Amendment Bill amends Schedule 10 of that Principal Act to replace the Ministry of Transport with the New Zealand Transport Agency. Uh, you know, you know, Although you, one could imagine that local body employees could indulge in friendly intercourse with employees of the Ministry of Transport, such is likely to be more fruitful and productive uh, if they held that with the employees of the responsible agency. And in this case, sir, with respect to consulting on temporary road closures, it is in fact the New Zealand Transport Agency they should be talking to, not the Ministry of Transport. So yet again, sir, another simple technical change which helps to make sure that our law actually operates uh, as intended. Sir, I'd also like to comment finally on the National Animal Identification and Tracing Act 2012. Clause 63 of the Statutes Amendment Bill inserts into that Principal Act, after uh, Clause 10.3, it inserts uh, Clause 10.3a, and that reads, when contracting out compliance and enforcement functions under subsection 3b, the NATE organisation remains responsible and accountable for performance of those functions. Now that, sir, is extremely, uh, extremely good measure and very sound. What it allows, of course, is for Nate to contract out certain functions to people that might be in a better, uh, a, a, in a better place to discharge them. They may have more competency, they may have more resource, they may have more practical skill in the matter. But, but most importantly, Nate remains accountable for what that uh, body or uh, subsidiary may do. It remains responsible for. Uh, the obligations under that Act. So, sir, that is a, just a, a, a small number of examples of the very good work that this omnibus does, uh, and I look forward to it progressing to the end of this debate and hopefully in, into a successful third reading. Thank you, Mr Chair.